I know at the moment that uh, there's been quite a few deaths in India from COVID. You've probably seen that. But have you ever been to India? The, the filth. There's just filth everywhere. So you've got a lot of mould. You haven't got a lot of pure air. And I was talking to one lady that works with them. She said, oh, they're terrible for drinking water. It's actually been a disaster waiting to happen. And if it wasn't COVID, it would have been something else. Let's have a look at carbon monoxide. Because carbon monoxide is the enemy of oxygen, and I'll show you why. So carbon monoxide, when it's breathed in, it forms a very tight union on the blood cell. But when oxygen's breathed in, it forms a very unstable union, very loose. And the reason for that is when that blood cell is going through our body, it can drop the oxygen quickly wherever it is needed. So if someone's breathing in carbon monoxide and oxygen, can you see the, the monoxide's going to grab it first? Because it forms a very tight union. And that explains why if you go to a hospital ward where limbs are being amputated, it's usually smokers. Because by the time the blood gets to the extremities, there's no oxygen left. And if, remember, it's the most vital element needed for life when those when those extremities are lacking oxygen, basically they start to die. Something else can affect, and that is hydration. You would never think of hydration when you're thinking of oxygen. But under a microscope, blood cells look like this. They're moving around. They're moving it around at an incredible rate. But if someone's dehydrated, the blood cells clump. It's actually called roulette. Now, when those blood cells go through the lungs, they pick up oxygen like little parcels. When this goes through the lungs, how much oxygen is it picking up? Can you see that someone can suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome? And of course, that's what lack of oxygen is called. Isn't that right? Chronic fatigue syndrome. All a person with chronic fatigue syndrome needs is more oxygen. Now, there can be a hundred reasons why there is lack of oxygen. We've just looked at some of them, and one is dehydration. If you ask the person with chronic fatigue syndrome, do they exercise, what's the answer? No, you, you don't understand. I've just got no energy. Well, guess how you get it? <laughs> you, you, you actually start moving. That's what you've got to do. I would say in nine cases out of 10 of people that have come to our retreats with chronic fatigue syndrome, I find a mold factor. You see, when a person's breathing in mold, they're not getting enough ex oxygen, so a lot of their cells, where are they running? Mm -hmm. Up at two units of energy. That's why the detective hat has to be put on and find out why these things are so. Also, something that can affect chronic fatigue syndrome is animals in the home. Because animals are not giving off pure air. <laughs> and especially when they are meat eaters, and most animals in the home are meat eaters, isn't that right? Which is your cats and your dogs. What they give off is not a, is not a nice air. And also the hair that they leave in the carpets, on the lounges. We were looking at a lady's blood slide. This is about five years ago now doing the live blood analysis and we saw a little parasite. <laughs> We've actually saw two <laughs> through the blood and we're, we're zooming around on the microscope. And we said to this lady, do you, do you have any animals in your home? She said, I sleep with four cats every night. And we said, well, look what they've done to you. <laughs> look what they've given you. <laughs> so animals really should be kept outside or they should be kept in, in tiled areas, definitely not in the bedrooms, because that interferes with the air that you're breathing while you're sleeping. Please begin to investigate your, your bed. How old is your mattress? Do you have a mattress protector on it? Is that washed every few months? Does your pillow, look where your pillow is, it's right where your face is. Every pillow should have a pillow protector on it. If you don't have a pillow protector on it, maybe you should buy a new pillow every year. Especially feather, I love feather, it's a natural fibre, 
but every night we lose moisture and the feathers take it in. So the feather pillows and quilts should be regularly sunned and ideally washed every couple of years.